What's happening, folks? Geologist Philip Prince looking out over Jamaica, looking up from the south here, uh, from the side of the island that Hurricane Melissa is about to impact within a day or so. Very serious situation developing here. Track of the center of the hurricane, I think it's supposed to do something. Kind of like that. It's going to come ashore in, in Manchester or Clarendon on the south coast. Come up, take a turn to the north and east. Draw a big yellow dot on Kingston right there. I'll put a dot on Mondeville as well for, for places of reference. With the circulation of wind around the center of the hurricane, going to have really crazy onshore wind and storm surge coming in towards Kingston. Uh, and in addition to that, you're going to see a lot of weather having to step up and over the really big blue mountains there uh, in Portland and, and St. Thomas parishes. Going to be bad. Uh, it's really sort of impossible to imagine a situation where there are not very severe impacts from this storm on Jamaica. I want to talk a little bit about the landscape in Jamaica uh, that makes it, of course, an incredible, beautiful island. A lot of people think about beaches in Jamaica. I think about mountains there. Um, had a chance to work there several years ago. Absolutely unbelievable place, but one that has more vulnerability to really big hurricane impacts because of that landscape. Uh, taking a look at it in Google Earth here, um, I don't know, I like to use different ways of looking at the land to try to see what mountains look like. You just go on Wikipedia, um, type in Jamaica elevation map or something like that, and you will see the island color-coded by elevation, kind of like I typically do in videos about the Appalachians. Crazy big mountainous place, uh, and in particular, on the eastern side of the island there, you got this kind of teardrop-shaped block of mountains called the Blue Mountains. Blue Mountain Peak is 7,400 feet above sea level, something like 2,300 meters, a little bit less than 2,300 meters above sea level. Uh, it's only nine miles from the ocean. So it's only nine miles from sea level, about 15 kilometers from sea level. So th the physical scale of topography here is, is quite impressive. It's not a large island, and, and that's a good-sized mountain for being that close to, to the actual ocean. Uh, the farther a mountain is from the ocean, the longer the, the land has to slope away, and it's easier for a, a larger mountain to persist over time if it's, if it's much more inland from an erosional standpoint. So this is a very impressive place. Have these other elevated blocks of mountain terrain. Much of the interior of Jamaica here is sort of a big high limestone plateau. Lower area here where Mondeville is located. It's about 2,000 feet uh, above sea level, and it drops off very quickly on its on its southern edge. So this is a this is not a flat or low lying island by any stretch of the imagination. There are low areas that you can see there along the coast in the green. Uh, it's in in most places it's a pretty rough mountainous place, which causes a lot of problems with storm runoff and potentially landsliding, which is going to be a a, a big focus uh, of this video. Another cool way to check out Jamaica that is readily available is just to go and, uh, and look at it here on, on Google Maps with the terrain function. Right now, we're looking down onto uh, the Blue Mountains there, and you don't have to be a geologist, as I'm fond of saying, to see that that's an incredibly rough, rugged landscape. Uh, almost, almost unbelievably so for being so close to the ocean. Kingston occupies a little a little flat spot. Actually, it's in a place where, where sediment coming down off the mountains is sort of accumulating there. It's about the only place you could build a city uh, of that size on an island like this. And as you move west, you get into these really interesting looking limestone limestone covered plateaus that have a very different grain to them. You can see they're they're almost smooth on top. If you get really close, they have a, a bumpy type of appearance that's related to the limestone dissolving. They call it cockpit landscape. Um, a lot of caves here, very little surface water uh, because it all soaks down into the limestone. But uh, as, you, as you can clearly see, it, it's a totally different topographic grain. Wind will be an incredible hazard. Uh, you can still absolutely flood areas all around this, but the details there are distinct from, from what you're going to deal with on the eastern end of the island. The one exception to that is right here, almost in the middle of the island, an area that a geologist called the uh, 
the central inlier. That doesn't look good with yellow there. Circle that in black. The central inlier has rocks that are more like what you see over there in the Blue Mountains. Uh, it's very river dominated. You have these tight, steep river gorges. And this area is right in the bullseye. So, so we will be looking at, uh, at absolutely exceptional precipitation there uh, and the exceptional river flooding that's going to go along with that. Uh, we'll hop back into uh, Google Earth here uh, and actually take it down into the Blue Mountains. Here in the Blue Mountains talked about quite a bit uh, in some of the reporting that is coming ahead of the storm here. And that's simply because they are so large and steep and abrupt and the weather is going to be blowing sort of straight up and, and over them. Uh, as you see here, we'll get down and uh, yeah, that should work pretty well right there. I'll uh, get Blue Mountain Peak marked here real fast. Should be it right there. I'm pretty sure I'm correct on that. Hiked up there two or three times to listen to these hummingbirds. You may not have thought hummingbirds make noises. They do. You hear them at sunrise. Incredible. Hope it does well in this storm. Got the Yalis River coming down to the Caribbean right there. The Yalis River, this absolutely huge fan delta that it's built out in into the ocean there. And all that tells you is that those mountains are eroding incredibly quickly over geologic time because every now and then they get a big event like this. Uh, and this is a landscape that always has heavy tropical precipitation uh, associated with its evolution. Uh, we'll zoom in closer yet here and just kind of take a look up and into the mountains here will give the uh, give the imagery a chance to catch up there. Let it calm down for a minute. Uh, all of that light color you see is is where people have cleared the land for agriculture. Uh, you might even be able to pick out some of these little scars in the landscape, which are smaller landslides. You get them in both the forested areas and the uh, the agricultural areas. Probably mark that one's pretty big right there. Have a suspicion if you look back over time, you could actually see when some of those happen. Steep terrain like this, uh, you see this especially strongly over in, in Haiti to the east. If you remove the vegetation and put the rainfall on it, it, it tends to go pretty crazy. And you do see a lot of folks living down along waterways. Uh, a lot of times because of the steepness of the land here, structures are actually pretty far up above those waterways. Um, so th this is an area that doesn't have floodplains as such, uh, at least in this part of at least this part of the landscape. But the landslide risk is is always going to be there. Um, sort of a sort of an interesting interesting thought there. Um, wanted to kind of give a little bit of a comparison to the Blue Ridge landscape that heard so much about uh, over the last year or so after the incredible impacts of Hurricane Helene. And in the Blue Ridge, have quite a bit of topographic relief, of course, and more than enough topographic relief to give you all kinds of, of flooding and landsliding. But within that landscape, it's going to develop features you know, like I'm sketching out here. Uh, put a few labels on this, get some flowing water also. I have streams coming down out of the mountains, sort of like that. Uh, and particularly significant here in the Blue Ridge is you get these sort of flat areas down at the foot of the mountain. Uh, we, we refer to that geologically as just, as just deposits. Um, it's like old landslide deposits. Uh, the, the landscape has sort of a limited amount of steepness. And when you get something like a debris flow kicking off up here, it's gonna come down here uh, and typically deposit itself onto that same area where that has happened uh, in the geologic past, right? So you, you have stark divisions between areas of the landscape that are, that are providing debris flows and providing a lot of slope material and where that material is piling up. Take yourself to a place like Jamaica, uh, and you're going to be looking at, hit my pen where you're right here, you're going to be looking at like a fundamentally much different landscape where 
just incredible, outrageous steepness, sort of at, at all parts of the landscape. Uh, really tight, like V-shaped gorges there coming down off of the mountains. Actually, I'm going to need to, uh, to move, the, move the face up here to the top, get this drawing finished out. So you maintain uh, a, an incredible amount of steepness and also sort of like a, you know, like a, like a tightness or sort of a restriction of, of gorges in the landscape. And that really goes uh, all the way down to uh, the, the bottom of the mountain. There really isn't uh, anything like that idea of, of sediment storage. So in a place like this, uh, might have a huge landslide way up here high. And this is a landslide that's that's involving the rock that the mountain is made of. Um, the examples here that we have in North Carolina, those start in stored soil, basically like thick soil that sits on the side of the mountains. It gives way, but it's, you know, it's a few feet thick and there's a limited amount of it that starts. Now it picks up a huge amount of material on its way downhill, but fundamentally uh, that is a soil process. Place like Jamaica, uh, kind of kind of a different game. Um, drop a huge amount of, of very weathered and, and sort of broken up rock there from high on the slope, and that thing's going to go a long way. Uh, and then down here, it's going to sort of merge, sort of merge with floodwaters, and there there's less of of kind of a kind of a slowdown for it, if you will. So you can have Helene-like features start. in this Jamaican landscape, but their power, their potential distance of travel, the volumes involved, it's a different, it's a different game, right? So this is a, this is a very dangerous landscape to be in, or at least parts of it are, are extremely dangerous in a storm like this. And ultimately that's just, uh, that's just because it's, it's like a younger and, and sort of actively growing landscape. It's designed To move to move rock material out of it very quickly, and in fact, streams that that start you know up here on the mountains in Jamaica they they get very large very quickly as they uh, as they make their way down slope. Um, what looks like a pretty large river at the coast is a tiny little trickle just just a few miles away. So they're they're two very very distinct landscapes, and that's why there's so much concern. Uh, in in this particular case because this is is a high energy it's a high energy place um you will see incredible flooding uh down the Yalis river down morant river um really just about anywhere i'd say the swift river and spanish river that go down to the to the north side off the blue mountains the the same scenario all of all of there you're looking at looking at big looking at big impacts they're they're going to be They're going to be variable um, depending on where you are. We'll pivot pivot the view around here real quick uh, and and just talk about this overall layout as to why, first of all, Jamaica is so elevated and rugged. I actually don't know what the average, if, if you took the entire land service in Jamaica and like averaged the elevation, I don't know what it would be, but it, it would it would be impressive. Um, much of the coastline of Jamaica is actually almost like rocky cliffs. Um, believe it or not, there's there's not just an overwhelming number of beaches on the island, and certainly not big, long, extensive ones, just because, quite literally, the island is like rising up out of the ocean. It's basically a growing, uh, a growing mountain range. And the reason that is the case, move the old box again there. There's a big old... fault. Uh, this is actually the same fault system that causes all the problems over uh, in Haiti that you're always hearing about in terms of earthquakes. The movement is like that. So the the upper right part of Jamaica there is moving away from you over time, uh, and the bottom left is moving down towards, towards the bottom right. Uh, there's kind of like a bend in the fault right here behind Kingston. Things are knocking together, pushing together there tectonically, and that's actually what's pushing uh, pushing the mountains up behind the city. That's why you have 7,400 foot high mountains on a on an island of of this size. And that actually makes 
uh, it actually makes the landslide hazard uh, in in some respects worse. It's a tropical country. The weathering of the rock is very intense here, uh, but there's also just characteristics of the uh, of the rock mass that are specific to uh, sort of the existence and development of this really young mountain range. So we'll try to draw out a cross section to Jamaica. That's kind of a cool, cool thing to do. I always wanted to do this on a video. I actually hate to be doing it um, under, under these circumstances, uh, but maybe somebody will find some value in it here. So kind of just a general stylized cross section. Uh, I actually don't even know how much what we would call sort of subsurface investigation uh, has even been done underneath Jamaica uh, in terms of, of sort of how the, the geologic structure is exactly working, but enough is understood uh, that it's possible to, to do a pretty good job of putting two and two together. Uh, I'm going to give ourselves, I got, got Kingston right here, moving out West Kingston there. Mellow that out a little bit. We've got sea level with a big curve in it. We can't have that. Maybe something like that. Water gets deep pretty fast uh, if you go off the uh, the south side of Jamaica there. So let's see if we can uh, fill a couple in here. Going pretty well. Um, figure out what kind of colors we're uh, what kind of colors we're going to use here. Something like that. Um, Color in the limestone there. Ought to have it a little bit thicker than that. That's probably going to work. I got a different suite of rocks there. And I'm like that. Uh, so the black lines here that are separating all these colors, these are these big geologic faults. We'll give ourselves a little bit of terrain here. This is long, long mountain. It's this big kind of whaleback hump shaped mountain. Sticks up right out of Kingston. Got Dallas Mountain there behind it, uh, and then you go into the into the Wagwater Mountains uh, north of that, or sort of further behind Kingston. You know, the Wagwaters wrap around like that, and then you got the big you know, the big high Blue Mountains that uh, that rise up uh, behind the Wagwaters there, and get some drainages in there. Over here, as you go to the west, you uh, get all of these interesting kind of plateau features that just have the uh, have the limestone sitting on them. We'll put this uh, this fault line here. This is kind of the main event fault right there that is, first of all, the big earthquake producer, but uh, it is actually kind of pushing up and uplifting, uplifting the rocks there to make those big mountains. And rocks that are close to big faults like that, uh, they tend to get damaged and broken up. They sit at all kind of funny angles in the landscape. It can make them very prone to sliding. Uh, in addition to that, see this in uh, some of the brown, some of the brown wagwater rocks here, uh, as well as in the uh, as in the limestone sequences. In young mountain ranges like this, you tend to get pretty soft, weak rock sitting on steep slopes because it's being rapidly uplifted, and the landscape isn't adjusted to where the uh, to where the hard rock. Uh, is the only stuff that really sticks up at, at high elevation. So you can get just generally weak mountains that are kept alive just by rapid uplift. And what we're throwing in right here, that's where uh, that's where Kingston sits there. We should probably put the uh, like the Palisados coming out here that the uh, that the airport sits on. Port Royal out at the end of that where the pirates used to hang out. Um, landscape that has a again like tectonic hazard, but with with all of the the rapid uplift and the big terrain there when you're putting a storm like like this one on it it's it, it's going to be something so you're going to be hearing about this uh for days probably weeks to come and hopefully hopefully folks come out uh as as well as can be expected in a situation like this um efforts are being made to prepare for it uh undoubtedly uh, recovery plans are uh, are already in place as well. So you'll uh, you'll hear from me about this uh, again as well. See how the situation unfolds. Uh, I have an idea that after the weather passes, there's going to be satellite imagery uh, that that's going to show what the island looks like as well, and that will probably be pretty telling uh, in in terms of what happened there. So I hope you found this video interesting. Hope you check out the next one when it comes along.